Hi guys, in this video we're going to be making a modelling paste version of Pikachu which you can use for a nice cake topper. This video is going to be a collaboration with the lovely Vanessa from Cake Style and she's a bit of an expert with buttercream and she's going to be making a buttercream cake version of Pikachu. You can find the link to her video up on the screen now and I'll also put a link in the description box as well so you can pop over and have a look. Take a look at her channel and do be sure to subscribe to her. So to begin with, we're just taking a small amount of modelling and flour paste. You can do it in normal fondant or fondant mixed half with modelling paste. Um, I want this to dry really hard so I've just gone for the modelling paste now. You'll see I've opened a pack of some that's ready dyed. It just saves me a little bit of time but you can dye it yourself, it's fine. Um, I've just got the Renshaw's flour and modelling paste which I always find works nice for me. So I've kneaded it to soften it a little bit and what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and make Pikachu in one shape or his body and his head together as sort of one piece rather than piecing him on separate and then we'll add his ears and tail and front feet afterwards. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start by sort of squashing this onto the board just ever so slightly so that we're getting a little flat bottom. Okay. And I'm going to start sort of pinching it in a tiny bit at the top so it's getting narrower as we go further up. And then about halfway down I'm just going to push my finger in. Now you'll see I've not kneaded mine very well so it's starting to get a few cracks in. The only thing is working with modelling paste is that you do have to work quite quickly as it does start to dry on the surface and then it will start to crack. Okay, so we're putting bit of an indentation in there with our fingers and then I'm pulling down below the indentation that we've made, keeping it narrow just below his head and bringing it round and down. So just play around until you're happy with the shape of the body. You can do your stood up as well while you're making it. Um, it's just easier for me to lie him down so you can see what I'm doing a little bit better. I'm just using the handle of my paintbrush now just to press in the indentations just a little bit more under where his head is going to be, just to make the line a little bit more obvious. Okay, now I'm going to shape his head a tiny bit, so I'm going to push it to make it just a little bit taller, and then I'm going to push slightly with my little finger across the middle so that we're creating a little bit of an indentation. I do apologise that I've got food colouring in my fingernails again just been dying something brown and I can't get it out of my, my thumbnail. You'll see my head's about half the size of the piece so the line is roughly central. So I've got it roughly the shape I want it to be. We can play around with it a little bit as we're making it as long as it hasn't dried out too much. So I'm just going to press a slight indentation in the bottom of the body just a tiny bit. Okay and you can keep standing yours up to make sure that it does sit nicely on a board and it doesn't fall over if it's too top heavy or anything. So I've just needed a bit more of my yellow modelling paste and I'm just going to roll it out I'm going to create the tail. So I've not rolled it really thin, it's probably just short of half a centimetre, although my uh, measurements aren't very good when I'm guessing, but yeah I think it's less than half a centimetre thick. And what I'm going to do is cut as kind of zigzag shape now for his tail. But what I'll do is I'll cut it to the length that I want it to be. So if we start it from the bottom of him and it comes at the very top to just about where the top of his head is. Okay, and we're going to start with a line coming across. And again, we'll do one coming down. So we'll start with one side with a zigzag, trying to move it further over in this direction as we're going along. And then we'll cut it to the other side so that it matches. Getting thinner as we go down. And he's got a little brown bit that goes at the bottom. We'll just check size-wise that it's about right. So mine's just a little bit long here, so we'll just cut a little bit off the end there. We'll see if that fits a little bit now, size-wise. 
and we're just going to put a little bit of brown fondant now at the bottom so I've got my brown fondant and I'm just going to roll it nice and thin and I'm just going to cut a little zigzag edge and a small amount of it and we're going to put this over the bottom of his tail and then I'm just going to cut that so it matches back with the zigzag now it might be that you want to let his tail set hard before you add it to the body as well and then you can just stick it on with a little bit of royal icing and while I've got the brown, he's got a couple of little brown stripes on his back now. Mine's quite flat at the back because I've been lying it down. If you make it upright, you'll find it should stay rounder at the back, unless, unlike mine. So taking my brown piece of fondant, I'm just going to roll it into a sausage shape. Although it's not a very even sausage shape, that's fine. Just make sure it's rounded at both ends. I've divided that in half. We'll just put a little bit of water on his back where these are going to go and we'll just push those on in place I'll re-roll this one so it's a bit neater and so they don't have really pointy edges like it seems to want to have each time I'm rolling it okay so we've added those to his back we'll turn him over hopefully they won't stick to the board again if he's standing up it'll be easier for you so what we're going to do now is give him a couple of feet. So just check size wise how big you want them to be. That's going to be a little bit too big but I'll probably half this. So when you're doing it, try and get two balls of an equal size. So those aren't quite even so we'll add a bit more to that one. We roll them. It's best to check the sizes against each other first. Otherwise you'll find when you make his feet that you won't be able to get them exactly the same size as the other one. So I think I'm about happy with that. What I'm going to do is just roll it so it becomes a little bit of an oval shape. And I'm just going to put some lines into the top. Now I'm not going to use like a fancy modelling tool. I'm just going to use my knife for this. And we're just going to insert two little lines coming down on the top like that. And you're just going to do exactly the same with the other one. And then we're going to stick it in place on his body. So just coming off just to the side, just a little bit. So we're going to take a bit more of the yellow and we're going to roll it again, ready for some arms. So I'll just half that. Now, don't expect to get the size right straight away when you're making something. And um, quite often I find that I'll roll something out, you have to trial it against the body. If it's too big just take a little bit off so again it's a little bit big we'll try again it's nearer now to the size that I want so again we'll roll it into a ball and then we'll make the other one the same size ball so that we know both his arms are going to be the same size okay so I think that's about right so what we're going to do is start by just rolling it a little bit we're going to flat it flatten it a tiny bit And what I'm going to do is just kind of straighten it at the top, but then try and thin it out a little bit because I don't want it too bulky at the top where his shoulder would sort of join into his body. And then at the bottom, for his little feet, we're going to just use a cocktail stick. And we're just going to push in at either side. Just keep pushing that down a little bit. I don't know how well you can see that, but it's just a slight indentation at either side. And then we're going to put some indentations at the bottom. So just trying to get it so his arms a little bit thinner at the bottom, wider in the middle and then thinner again at the top. And then we're going to have it so the hand comes to the floor and we'll just widen that a little bit. Bit of water on the back and we're just going to stick that on. So 
So we're just going to do exactly the same thing now for his second arm. So I'll speed this up for you. So I've now got a little bit of black. Again, I bought this one um, ready dyed. So this is just a Renshaw's one because um, it's quite difficult to dye it black. We're just going to take a really small piece for his nose. This might be a little bit big. Just trial it. Yeah, so that's a bit big for his nose. It is very tiny. So once you're happy with the size, we'll just put a tiny bit of water and it's pretty central on his face. So make sure it's oval shaped. You probably find it sticks to your finger anyway for when you're putting it on. So it sticks to my finger but not to the model. So just push that down. So now we're just going to push his mouth in and we're just going to use a cocktail stick. So he's got a little bit of a gap under where his nose is. So we'll just mark to about here. And then it's going to come around either side. Now you can use a modelling tool if you prefer, whichever you find easiest. So I'm just going to gently mark on where I want it to go first. I'll just turn it around to do it at the other side. See if you can do it even and try and make it match at both sides. So once you've got it on, you can go on a little bit deeper with your cocktail stick or you can use a modelling tool. So this is just a PME one that I've bought online. Just making sure that the lines are nice and defined. So again, taking our black, we're going to roll two round circles for his eyes. And to check the size, you can use a cutter if you've got a cutter. I'm just going to roll a ball and then press it down with my finger to create a little circle. We'll just hold it against his face so we can see size-wise what it's like. So you're going to do this twice. Try and get them both the same size if you can. We can manoeuvre them a little bit when they're stuck on the face. So I'm going to put water on his face now where I want them to go. And then see if you can get them off your work surface. Which I can't. I think it's just stuck to my finger. And we're just going to push that in place. I don't knock his nose off while I'm doing it. So we're just going to take a little bit of white to put in his eyes. And we're just going to roll two tiny balls of white. So once you've got them to about where you want them, I'm just going to put them in the corner of his eye. If you want them a little bit bigger, just gently press them down so they get a little bit larger as you squash them. And he's going to need some red cheeks. So I've now got a bit of red fondant. Again, we're going to roll two small balls of it for his rosy red cheeks. Size-wise, just squash it on your hand so you can see how big the circle's going to go, so you know how big you want it to be on his face. I think that's about right size-wise. So we're going to squash it a little bit. You see I've got red food colouring all over my hands from dyeing it. And we're going to wet his face whereabouts we want the red to go. And then we're going to stick these on. And you can use a little circle cutter if you've got a circle cutter and you find it a little bit easier. But this is just to show you that you don't have to have lots of cutters. You can just make the shapes by hand if you want. Again, just squash down the other one to the right shape. So taking our yellow again. I'm going to take off a small amount for his ear and we're going to roll it between our fingers so that you get a shape that's a little bit bigger in the centre and then narrows a little bit as we get to the end. It's not completely flattened, we're just sort of holding it down just a little bit and then we're going to press down at this end that's going to stick to his head and just check size wise that's it's the right size for his head. I'm going to make another one to match. So once you've got them both to shape, I'm just going to wet the bottom end, the flat bit of each one. Now I'm going to have to stand it up to try and stick them on, but you're going to stick them on the top of his head but at either side in this kind of position like that. But I'm going to stand mine up now. So you might find they take a little bit of pressing on to get them in shape. So just push them on 
until they want to stick like that. So I've taken some more black. I'm going to roll it nice and thin. And I'm just going to cut a couple of strips. You can be thicker at one end, thinner than the other, that's fine. It doesn't have to be nice and even. And I'm just going to wet the end of his ear. And we're going to put these over the end. Now I'm going to stand this up. If you've got time to let your ears dry, then do. And we're going to trim it so that we can wrap it all the way around the end of his ear. Alternatively, you can paint it on. Okay. So see which you prefer. So once you've got one on, just do the same for the other one. So what you're going to do now is just stick on your tail. Now, I'm just going to leave mine lying down when I've stuck on his tail. So I'm going to put a bit of water on. You can use edible glue if you prefer. Just make sure it's lined up with his bottom at the back. And then just push that into place where you want it to go. So where it's touching his head at the back a little bit, I'm just going to put a little bit of water there as well to secure it in place. So I'll leave him to stick on his tail like that. Then once he's dry, I'll sit him back up. Of course, you can leave yours set up, wait for the tail to dry and then stick it on, that's fine. You can use oil icing to stick it on. That works well too. So I'll put up a picture of him finished. And please do remember to pop over Vanessa's uh, cake page from Cake Style, where she's gonna be making a buttercream version of a Pikachu as a cake. Thank you for watching. If you liked this video and would like to see more, please click on the images of the other videos suggested. Also, please do subscribe to my channel using the button at the bottom right hand corner of the screen. You can also visit my cake website and my Facebook page to see more cakes and ideas.